Hi, I'm Rob Cos, and welcome to my shop. There are literally hundreds, perhaps even thousands, of woodworking books available in the market. How do you know which one is good? Well, I've been collecting them for the past 40 years. I went through mine and picked out a stack that I think are the most valuable. I'm going to share them with you. Hopefully, this will help. I'm Rob Cosman, and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help you take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and don't forget to turn on the notification on your mobile device so you'll know every time we release a new video. Good? All right, back to the bench. When I started woodworking, obviously we didn't have internet, and there wasn't a lot of local reference, so the only thing you really had were magazines and various woodworking books. And I'd started collecting books at a very early age, and you never really knew what, what you were going to get until you actually bought it. I went through my, my very vast library, and I picked out the ones that I've used the most over the years, that I've got the most out of, and I still go back to occasionally. So here's my number one, Encyclopedia Furniture Making by Ernest Joyce. Originally published in 1971, now, Ernest Joyce was a uh, traditionally trained cabinet maker in England, and this book, I think, does a better job of covering everything related to hand and or power tool woodworking that you can find, and I've used it as a reference all these years. Now, this is the 1987 version that was revised by Alan Peters. In fact, I met uh, with Alan in 1987, and he signed it for me. Uh, what I actually asked him about some of the things in the book, and he said, well, all he really did went in what did was go in and update some of the pictures and add some commentary on some styles. But for the most part, he left the book as it was. But if you go through this, this is not something you're going to sit down and read cover to cover. It's got a really good index, but you'll go in and you'll find things. Now, this is all mostly English wood. Well, it is predominantly English woodwork, so you're going to see that influence quite strong. But it covers everything from building church furniture to uh, some of the more modern stuff that was being made at the time, to some very traditional stuff. But, and Alan actually added the color section, which has got some nice work in there. Some pieces I really like. Shapes, way, various ways to treat edges. Now, you're not going to get the very best reproduction of things like burl on a black and white, but it'll give you some idea. A lot about veneering. It just covers everything, and I've adopted a lot of what's in here into my own woodwork and the style that I, I uh, use and teach today. But if there was to be one book that I would save in case of a fire when it comes to woodworking, that would be the one. Next one I want to share with you is Woodworking by Ian Kirby. Now, this was a series that he had started back in the 70s, 80s, I believe. Never got all the way through it. I got the first two, book one and book two. Plain perfect. What I really like about this is the way he illustrates, makes it very easy to see as opposed to a black and white photograph, which would be difficult. And it just covers all of the basics, again, from an English perspective. But I have uh, follow a lot of various English craftsmen, and they all have their unique aspects. And I like what I like most about uh, Ian is that he's... Uh, there's no excuse. It's you do it until you can, cannot see how it can be done better, and it goes throughout everything he does. I really was heavily influenced by his method of sharpening, which was very very quick. I'll leave you a link to my 32 seconds to sharp. A lot of that I would have adopt, adopted from him, combined with some stuff I learned from Alan, or pardon me, from uh, David Charlesworth. So this is a really good one if you can find it. I don't even know if it's available in, in second hand. But that one was plain perfect, and this was down to a line. So this is more about cutting edges, planes, and chisels, and this is more about sawing. But it gives some great advice. Everything from coping saws to power saws, table saw blades to ripping and cross-cutting blades uh, saws. Just awesome material. Some of the best. Okay, I'm going to veer a little bit away from actual woodwork to uh, more in talking about wood. Eric Sloan wrote this. He wrote several books, but this one, Reverence for Wood. I've always liked this. 
And the reason I do, it gives you so, it tells you uh, so much detail on things wood related that you just wouldn't otherwise find. Whether it's talking about how to identify various trees to various uses for, um, or how they would make various farm implements. This is a little bit of on shaker boxes, how they make charcoal. I just find this stuff being a wood nut very interesting. Even talks about fencing. Here's an interesting one on the amount of heat you get out of a cord of wood or how much, how much heat you get out of a specific amount of wood if you compare it. So white pine over here, hickory on this end. And then it talks about how much wood was being used in the middle of the 19th century. And no wonder uh, forests were depleted because they used it to uh, everything from the railroads to people's houses. And in fact, it got to the point where in New England they used mostly white pine because all the hardwoods were being chewed up. And this, there's uh, lots of stuff in here on um, timber framing, just uh, even how to make how cut nails were made, just all kinds of real interest. This is one of those books where you pick it up and you read it all the way through, just because of the interest in it. Talking about how when I say you find all kinds of stuff that you just wouldn't otherwise find. There's one in here about why nails pop out on on wood siding, or in this case, it comes to shingles. Really interesting stuff. So if you can find that. That's a, that's a great read. A reverence for wood. So in 1987, I got to work at Anderson Ranch Art Center. And one of the uh, people I got to be an assistant for that summer was Tay Frid. And uh, even as long as he had been in the United States, and by 1987, his accent was still extremely thick. So you had to be around him a while before you could understand what he was saying. But the way that he wrote his series of books, there were three of them. This is the only one I have. This is one that I liked the most. It was just really easy to follow because in, in his line drawings, he would just use um, red ink to follow you through from one step to the next. Found it very easy, very easy to follow. Probably a little more machine related than hand tool, however, there's a fair amount of hand tool in there. But it's another really good reference book. Now, he was from Denmark, called himself the Great Dane. So, his, his material is going to be a little bit different than what you're going to get from uh, Ernest Joyce or Ian Kirby, but still some great information, fantastic. I believe this book is still available, and I would highly recommend that you would want to add that to your reference library. Hey, if you like this video, we have more. Our monthly newsletter has subscriber-only content, discounts monthly on tools, and anything we bring out that's new, subscribers get first crack at it. Click on the link below. Let's get back to work. How to Build Shaker Furniture by Thomas Moser. Now, I met Tom Moser a couple of times. The last time, sat down with him for a couple of hours and just talked. And uh, why I like this book, I went through a period in the uh, mid-90s where I was starving to death as a furniture maker, and I actually was doing a lot of other things, trying to earn a living, carpentry-related. And this book eventually brought me back around to building furniture. It's very, very simple in that everything is uh, black and white pictures with line drawings, but there's several pieces of furniture. Now, I really like Shaker furniture. I love the simplicity of it. I love the fact that the method of how it's joined is one of the main features, and it lets the wood speak. And there's plans, not necessarily detailed, but measurements for every piece in here. And I've gone, I went through, I guess I was at a period of time when I didn't really have the energy to uh, be designing furniture for customers. I was starving to death doing that anyway. And this was a way of going in and enjoying the woodwork without having to think about the design. I simply went in and built some of these, several of these pieces, probably uh, at least a dozen of them. And Tom Moser is still alive. You can still get this book. And if you're interested in simple furniture, but well-made furniture, because he doesn't just show you the furniture and uh, the plans, but he'll also talk to you and teach you in various ways of whether it's drawer construction or fastening a top to a table base, lots of stuff in here. Very simple, very easy to follow, really good book. How to Build Shaker Furniture, Thomas Moser. If you're new to woodwork, it won't be very long before your attention is turned to workbenches. It's, a, it's an essential tool. 
I, I picked this book up in the late 80s, and I think it's probably the best book that has ever been written on workbenches. It's called The Workbench Book by Scott Landis, published by uh, Taunton Press. And it goes through, it, and, the, and the back side, it gives you f the detailed plans for four different benches. Ian Kirby's bench, Michael Fortune's bench, um, a shaker bench, and Frank Claus' bench. I actually built this one using these plans. But it also gives you a lot of detailed information about benches, how they function, various, lots of information about vices. It's just a really good reference. Highly recommend if you haven't settled on a bench, pick this up. Even if you have on a bench, I think it's great information and great reference for customizing a bench and going in and adding something that you may not find on a regular bench that may be specific to the type of woodwork you do. So Scott Landis, The Workbench Book. Excellent. This is the uh, only book that Alan Peters wrote. It is entitled Cabinet Making, The Professional Approach. Now, I personally think Alan Peters is the best designer craftsman of the last century. And this book is very, I would say it's very specific to uh, professional furniture makers. He goes through and talks a lot about the, the business side of designing and building furniture. He also talks about various grants, which is not going to be very applicable to people outside of the UK. However, I still think there's some great information in here on Alan Peters, where his influence came from, the style that he liked to work with. And although it's black and white, it's still pretty good, nice, crisp uh, photography. And I just, I just love, uh, I love the work that he did and I love the use of his joinery and uh, heavily influenced by Alan Peters. Like I said, I think he was the best designer craftsman of the last century and one that actually survived building for designing and building furniture and at the same time had a fair number of apprentices working in his shop. Now, I, th I think this is actually back in, uh, in print. Cabinet Making the Professional Approach by Alan Peters. By Roy Underhill. He has, he has a couple of books, but I, what I like about these is uh, somewhat of a country approach. There was a time when a farmer had to literally be able to do everything from building his furniture to fixing his fence. And I just like the, uh, I like Roy's approach on doing things by hand. Doesn't necessarily work with the same level that you were going to find from Alan, Alan Peters or Ian Kirby, but uh, still, Great, a great read in terms of how things were done, how things can be done, obviously just with hand tools. And it's just, a, it's just a, a really good book, really good read. Whether it's, uh, this one is the work, Woodwright's workbook, and this was the Wood, Woodwright's companion. And uh, just more of the same, but he's actually still around. In fact, he's still quite active. So you should be able to pick these up, but I would recommend add these to your list as well. Roy Underhill. Now there's one more book I want to include, and this is something Jake recently purchased. And this uh, is nice because it shows how photography is improving. Eric Meyer wrote this book, Wood, and uh, what's really nice about it is it just has tons of pictures and all the different species, and I say all the different, all the common species, but I want to show you how good some of the pictures are. So if you look at this piece of tulip wood, so here's a piece of tulip wood, and that's pretty good reproduction on the coloring. And then I'm going to show you a piece of black and white ebony. Now that one's a pretty easy one to pick out, but it's still a pretty good rep representation a reproduction in terms of what the wood's actually going to look like. And it's nice that it goes through and it tells you the hardness, tells you where it's from, working properties. Sometimes those are subjective, but I think this is another, especially if you're new to woodworking and you're, you're wanting to know what's available and what's out there because there are literally hundreds if not thousands of species available commercially in various parts of the world. With YouTube today, you can find just about any topic you want. You can get various people's opinions and lots of instruction. But I still think there's value in going through some of these old texts and finding information that just has kind of been lost or it's being delivered in a little different approach that just may click with you. 
But it is a sad commentary, I think, when you compare the number of books that are out there to what I think is actually worth reading, and everyone's going to have a different opinion on it. But I took these mostly for their content and teaching you how to do something very specifically, obviously leaning toward hand tools. But this is my recommendation, so if you're looking for some good reading and some good instruction, pick up any one of these. Pick them up all if you can. Good luck with it. If you like my work and enjoy my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos and help take your woodworking to the next level. I've always said, better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the link below, the chisel and plane icon, it'll take you to our site and introduce you to all the tools that we actually manufacture right here in our shop. It'll also give you information on our online and in-person workshops.